Hello everyone, this is Remlays from 40k Theories, and welcome to this new episode of Adeptus Podcasters. Joining me as always is Tactica Imperialis. Hello everyone. And joining us as our guest this week is a miniature painter you may recognise from the YouTube channel of Rogue Hobbies. I got that right, didn't I? Yes? Yeah, yeah, not Rouge Hobbies. Yeah, That's I the did. second most searched thing when people search for uh, Rogue Hobbies is Rouge Hobbies, but it's in fact Rogue, thank you. <laughs> yes. Um... But yeah, I lost my place. But anyway, uh, joining us this week, Louise Sugden. Hi. <laughs> Hi. 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 So everyone. for those, um, so for those listening who may not be too familiar with your work, could you care to give us a brief introduction? Absolutely. So I'm a longtime Warhammer fan and also a very longtime Warhammer painter and player, but more of a painter. I worked in Games Workshop for about seven years as an illustrator and graphic designer before I moved into the marketing department to do Citadel Masterclass for Warhammer Plus. And I've recently, as in like a month ago, um, quit my job to move on to greener pastures in YouTube. And it's all very exciting for me right now. And it's exciting to be here, so thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Um, and of course, links in the doubly do to check if you want to uh, follow up with Louise's work from here, if you either haven't heard or you remember the masterclasses and want to see more. Oh, yes. Yes, because you. you're quite prevalent with work regarding the Rainbow Warriors, if I remember correctly. Yes. Okay, so that like that's interesting because like I posted about them because I've been painting them for years and years because I love Rainbow Warriors. And a lot of people thought it was like a homebrew faction that I just kind of created, obviously because uh, I like painting oops. like bright colours <laughs> and stuff like that. Yes. So a lot of people assumed that they were a homebrew faction until I did that video kind of explaining, no, they're OGs. And people seemed genuinely very surprised, which genuinely surprised me as well. <laughs> so that was interesting. Yeah, I think a few people forget they were like um, a reference to Greenpeace, weren't they? Originally. Oh, yes. So in my research, so obviously we all know the, the Greenpeace incident that happened, Operation Satanique. I just like saying that. But um, I <laughs> kind of looked into it a little bit more. And like the term Rainbow Warrior is is an interesting one because it, and I, I alluded to this in my video, but I didn't want to get too much into it because I didn't particularly want to get into like religious politics and stuff like that on YouTube where I'm trying to have a nice time. But I can do it here, I think, Very right? <laughs> um, <laughs> to an extent. <laughs> So, like, the Church of America in the 1960s kind of came up with the term Rainbow Warrior, I think, this is from my own research, to kind of be like, oh, there's a little bit of an indigenous American inside all of us, and they're they're called Rainbow Warriors, and, and it, it's, it was just a little bit gross, honestly, so I was like, ugh, not putting that in the video. <laughs> but I think that's um, partially where the term Rainbow Warrior came from as well, which is interesting. I did not know that. I, no. I always assumed it was just in reference to the boat that got sunk. It is It is 100% in reference to the boat that got sunk. But the boat that got sunk could be in reference to the Church of America in the 1960s. I don't know. <laughs> How the deep does the rabbit hole go? Apparently usually, extremely deep. I mean, it's usually Remleys who's got the infinitesimal law knowledge about everything, but then I suppose Rem oh, stopped no. reading at the end of the Warhammer literature, and then actually the real world <laughs> literature is half even more interesting than the Warhammer well, literature. This is the it. Um, the the real life literature and the real life lore is a is a big part of my love for Warhammer, and there's like you cannot point to a miniature without me being like, here's the deep lore on how that miniature got created, what the references are, and why it's called that name. I, I love it so much. In fact, I've got, um, spoiler, depending on when this comes out, spoiler, I guess, but my next big YouTube video I'm working on, do you guys watch, like, what they called? Iceberg videos. Oh, yeah, I know what you're um, Yeah, I'm aware of the concept. I love iceberg videos. So what I'm doing is a weird Warhammer miniature iceberg video where I spend like two hours talking about every single weird release that Games Workshop has ever done and it's hit the history of like each miniature until you get like to the very bottom of just like the grossest, weirdest miniatures that have ever been released by Games Workshop. And can you guess what they are? Yeah, like, what, I think I know which one's going to be on there. What, go yeah. on, guess. I want, I, want, I want to hear what, because I've probably missed out. Like, I'm so guessing I you're going to reference the, the Warhammer Fantasy Pygmies. Oh, oh, so interestingly, no. So, <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, right. So, I do this bit at the beginning where I'm like, look, this is a nice channel. This is a nice channel for nice people. 
<laughs> and um, I'm aware there are some god awful, not just like design choices. I'm okay with like awful design choices, but just like morality choices, right? Just like yeah. terrible mm. choices that Games Workshop has made in the past that I don't want to bring that conversation onto my channel in the reference totally to, to to everyone yeah. just having a fun time looking at goofy little miniatures. So I'm going to say those miniatures are in like sub iceberg, like where like just, bleh. oh God. But yeah, like absolutely. For a reason and they should stay buried. Kind yes, of exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like I wouldn't want people to come to my channel and see those depictations of you know that kind yeah. of thing yeah, 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 so yeah. there's there's a few miniatures like that that i missed out like um the dark eldar slaves remember those oh, oh they're now part of um yeah days of destruction yes absolutely absolutely so there's a few like it's it's something i've said before in in my discord and in my videos is that there's a difference and it's a subtle one with warhammer between war gaming which by nature is bloody and gory and it's war and wars yeah. exist in real life and us having like getting reminded of actual real life atrocities which affect people personally and yeah there's it's, a line like, there somewhere absolutely and like it's 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 a tricky one isn't it because like i've i've had someone come up to me lovely lady and she was like can we just like because that's whilst I was working in the studio lovely lady came up to me and she's like I'm really upset at some of the references to self-harm in Warhammer and I was like oh absolutely that sounds awful I'm so sorry about that so we had a conversation and the references to self-harm turned out to be so um witches in 40k performing like cutting rituals where they they cut their hand and blood comes out and it spills onto the book and that, to me, had never registered as a, a red flag that could potentially be triggering for someone else. But apparently it was. And it, it's, it's very tricky when you have this very grim, dark setting to balance, hey, we're just goofy guys having a goofy time and real life things that people find upsetting, like war mm. and self-harm. Of right. course, of course. I hadn't, I wouldn't have thought of that either. Could you see no. that sort of depiction throughout mm -hmm. literature all over the place? I just first one springs Absolutely. to mind. You literally have to do it in the main plot of Skyrim. So, yes, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, I hadn't considered that either. But when do you stop? Like, because Warhammer is in a place now, and and this is a conversation which would take two hours in of itself, is how Warhammer is marketing itself as someone who came from the marketing department. And we're selling Warhammer to 11-year-olds with Ultramarines being the good guys and Chaos, I guess, being <laughs> the bad guys. Right? Yeah, that's so, uh, yeah. that good guys conversation. Yep. It's it's the good guy conversation. We're there already. It's, it's a really interesting one. And it's one that I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's an answer for it. Because, of course, I got into Warhammer, or at least I was introduced to Warhammer very young. And to me, it was cool. It was battle robots and stuff. And I didn't get the fact that a dreadnought was a dead guy in a sarcophagus and, you know, stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's an interesting one, growing up with Warhammer and... Mm. In your in your older age, or at least my older age, um, realizing that it's horrific, and it's it's at least it was created to be ironic and self-referential, and it seems that it's it's kind of gone away from that, and it's back to it being like Iron Man versus the bad guys, insofar as the Ultramarines are Iron Man, and that's how they're being mm. pitched to kids, and it's it's quite interesting. I don't know where do you yeah, where do you stand and, on that? Well, as someone who runs a Warhammer club where our entry mm. age is often 11 years old. Yes, um, absolutely. Good. We we haven't grappled necessarily with, okay, let's sit down. How are we pitching this? But mm -hmm. we've generally introduced the story afterwards uh, and bits and bobs have been introduced as we've gone along. Yes. But I haven't shied away from the fact that the Space Marines are not, people nuanced necessarily yeah. oh interesting um, yeah that's the, the the kind of like yeah that's that's quite a good spin on it isn't it like, like they that. are they are super soldiers they absolutely were humans but they are taken very young and genetically modified and messed around mm -hmm. with to become 
super soldiers for yes. the Imperium. I'm not going into yeah. the politics of like the Imperium is this or uh, yeah, chaos yeah, all the, is that, it, it, but, yeah, it used to be a lot more obvious, but it's all been retconned since then and and reworked into yeah. something a bit more subtle. Yeah, absolutely. But even with this, with that, we've been able to sort of get the idea across that there are no good guys. I have ma- I've made that statement yes. numerous times. And it's interesting you mentioned the subtlety part because I, I happened to be on Twitter today. I can't imagine why. And uh, I saw <laughs> Imper- Imperium trending and clicked it thinking, okay, what's this about? And the first yeah. post that comes up is in reference to Adrian Tchaikovsky's Day of Ascension, which is like, oh. the Imperium are horrible and lists off four <laughs> reasons why as depicted in Day of Ascension. It is yes. shoved right in your face. That Absolutely. the Imperium, or at the very least the Mechanicus, are absolutely horrible. Yes. And I think, yeah, the the core sort of narrative is a little bit more subtle. Absolutely see, well, we can see it sort of with the law of Leviathan and all of that, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that they don't really talk much about bureaucracy and what the Imperium actually is and yada, yada, yada. And that's fine mm-hmm. because you've got to have a way to get people in the door. But yes. once you get as far as the gates of the Black Library or actually sitting down with the rule book and reading the law section, mm-hmm. um, they do make it pretty clear that, yeah, the Imperium may be the good guys because they're human, but yes, they are not because you good. relate to them as humans, but we as humans are flawed, and that's, yeah. So the correct term is the Imperium are the protagonists. Ah, yes, yes of course. The that's a good, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you so can I'm have a protagonist the, uh, who's not good. Yeah, absolutely. I'm reading the End and the, End and the Death, part one, right now, and mm. I'm very that's early into book. it. It is, I'm really enjoying it so far. It's um, Dan, Dan Abnett, bless him. Yep. And um, I'm really enjoying um, the sit-down chats with Horace. At the right at the beginning of the oh book. yeah yeah absolutely fabulous for that kind of stuff because he's sitting down and he's like oh yeah I know I'm not the favorite and Horace says himself I'm closer to a human I'm closer to you the remembrancer than I am to a god and it's like ooh I like a lot of that I'm enjoying the um, seizure terror for like the humanization I guess I guess of the primarchs and stuff like that it's 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 really interesting mm. I think the um. The little kids' books did it really well. I really enjoyed those. I remember when those got released. There was a bit of a oh, hubbub. Oh God, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Warhammer <laughs> Adventures. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Was, someone actually said they they read through them and like there was actually They're some quite good. horrific things being the depicted. Ethereals them, like, one, yeah, the Ethereal's one, yeah, the Tau one. Yeah. Oh yes. The um, there was a Necron one as well. I um. When they got released, I went to Games Expo to work. I don't know if either of you have ever been to Games Expo. It's very fun. Not so lucky. Oh, it's really good fun. There's usually a um, painting booth and stuff for Games Workshop. But um, the year that I went was the year that these books got released. And they set up like a kid's reading corner for these books. And it was like cute. It was like little Necron cutouts and stuff and like beanbags. And I was like, this is great. I love this. (laughs) But it was... And I read through them and they, like, you couldn't flaw them. They had a great, like, library, not library, what's, index at the beginning where it told you what everything was. And they were just, like, really good books. I think people just kind of freaked out, as they do sometimes on the internet when new things come along, that they were babying Warhammer. But it's just, it was for a different audience. And I think that's absolutely fine. It's it's good to get kids into Warhammer. I've met loads of kids into Warhammer and I'm I'm not like, well, you're going to be traumatized now. Sucks to be your therapist in the future. Like, (laughs) I was like, we in Britain like to call that the animals of farthing wood effect. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, we, we've for been... those of you listening who may not be aware of what Animals of Farthing Wood is, Me. It, was a, it was a children's TV really? show back in the 90s, like, you know, you know an animated show about, you know, like Red animals leaving the park. Yeah. Uh, no, just re- regular, regular, you know, animals living in the wild, and they have to leave their homeland because it's being, you know, paved over, you know, by a car park or whatever. Boom. And it is full of the most horrific shit you will ever see. <laughs> like, there is literally a scene in one episode where the baby mice are being impaled on thorns oh by a gosh. butcher bird. 
a scene where the two hedgehogs yeah. are run over because one of them gets has a panic attack while trying to cross the motorway. Me. So his wife goes back and holds it to hug him, and they both die together by being squashed by a lorry like, and stuff like that. Yeah, and of course, as kids, like we grew up with these like animals which talk and we're like oh it's a friendly little thing so you watch this thing you're like oh no i'm traumatized mm, right yeah. uh fun, fun okay yep, someone actually did you. a um <laughs> someone actually did a video editor on twitter uh, just doing a compilation of all the death scenes set Good to Tommaso champa's no one will survive theme song oh my god <laughs> So, like, if kids can handle that, like, we all dealt with Bambi and the Lion King and actual, like, you know, stuff like that. You know, th- these kids have had Marvel. They're used to entire cities being blown up by the good guys and stuff like that. So I think they'll be OK with, with you know, a little bit of Warhammer. Doesn't good. <laughs> Yes, and if you want to get them into Warhammer, well, I hope you're happy to sit in a pre-order queue because the Leviathan <laughs> box got fully revealed at Warhammer Fest. I apologise for being the one that let's drag the show back on topic, but we've gone through 15 oh, minutes yeah, of, of the word Warhammer Fest has not even been mentioned yet. And I feel I'm so like sorry. I'm so we... sorry. I'm no, just having it's fine. fun. <laughs> no, it's absolutely fine. Have fun all you want. That's what we want. Good. But, you know, Good. you were at Warhammer Fest and neither Ren nor I could go, so... Your experience Yay. of the the day would be amazing alongside obviously right. talking about the stuff that got revealed while we were there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I I went for the first time as a customer. Have either of you, I, I released a video on this and I, if, if neither of you have watched it, that would be great because I won't just be repeating myself. I haven't yet, no, sorry. Thank you. It's like the no. only time I'll be like, thank you for not watching my video. But <laughs> this means <laughs> I'm, um, I'm not going to be repeating anything. Well, maybe to the people listening to this. Hi, everyone, by the way, listening to this. It's really nice to be here. Um, so, yes, I went to Warhammer Fest for the first time as a customer. And that was a very interesting experience for me because I've basically attended every single Warhammer Fest open day and Horace Heresy weekend for the last seven years. So I am very much aware of what Warhammer Fest used to be, how they've changed and what they are now. Mm. And having that perspective now from the customer side was very interesting. So Warhammer Fest were like my favorite things to do. Um, when I started, I was a graphic designer um, in, Hor- in Horace Heresy in Forge World. So I didn't really do anything that was because back in the days, creatives used to go to Warhammer Fest. And the big pull was that you'd get to meet the people who wrote your favorite book. You get to meet the artist who drew your favorite elf. And it was just like everybody vibed off that. And it was a wonderful time to be alive. And at the time that I was working in Forge World, I hadn't really done anything interesting. I'd only done like construction booklets and boxes. But Tony Cottrell, who's the head of Forge World, would kind of just let me go for fun. And he would just sit me at a table and be like, it's okay, Suggs, you just paint something. And I'd be like, oh, thank you. So I really enjoyed <laughs> Warhammer Fest. Yeah, it was it was very nice of him. I was like a chihuahua with a little like hat that they just wheeled out to dance but that's okay because that's what I like to do um but yeah I really enjoyed Warhammer Fest the Horus Heresy open days were always particularly fun for me but the main pool I'll say the main pool because from our point of view it was the main pool was the fact that you got to talk to the people behind Warhammer and that was incredible it was like the one day a year that you could, you know, sit in a seminar, put your hand up and ask about a rule and have the guy that wrote that rule tell you what it was about And that was amazing. So this, I think, was the first event, or at least the first Warhammer Fest, where that was no longer a thing. And I think I think it was worse. I I, I really struggled to see how it improved the general kind of experience for people that they, they, they did no longer have that. Um so I really miss seeing my friends. And Warhammer Fest was interesting for me in general because I didn't pay for a ticket. I was full. Well, I did. Let me let me explain. So I had already bought two tickets to Warhammer Fest off my own money, which mm-hmm. was great. I intended to go for three days, standard ticket, nothing fancy. But then I forgot to buy a ticket for Golden Demon because privilege, when you're a staff member, you don't have to buy a ticket for Golden Demon. You can just rock up with a miniature and enter the open category. So I left it very last minute. They were all sold out. So I emailed the events team and I was like, hey, if you've got any dropouts, let me know if there's any like ticket I can buy. 
and they were like, no problem, Suggs, we've comped you um, two premium <laughs> tickets and two tickets to Golden Demon. So I was like, oh shit, there goes my bi- unbiased like review of Warhammer Fest. Because <laughs> they, um, they, they gave me two premium tickets, which was lovely of them and very unexpected. So I, I gave one of the other tickets I bought to my mum and my mum came to Warhammer Fest with me, which was very nice. Mm. I enjoyed that a lot. Sorry, I'm having a little drink. It's very hot in here. Um, so it has been then, quite muggy today, hasn't it? It's it's been horrific for the Cory Bobs, for Chaz's Cory Bobs. It's just so sway, but it's okay. Um, so yeah, I went to Warhammer Fest on a premium ticket, which was just three day entry and Golden Demon, and that's all I wanted really was that. So I get there, and it's very impressive. Like it's in a huge building. Um, And they've got all the usual things there, like there's the paint and take table, Golden Demon, some of the licensed people. So people that make some of like the games and stuff. None of the like games like Total Total War or anything like that, which I play, would have liked to seen like the Total War people there and stuff. And um, Dark Tide or Vermintide. Those are my favorite games, but they weren't there. And um, then they had the tournament. And then the big thing, I guess, at Warhammer Fest was the fact that it was they were kind of revealing and promoting the new edition of 40k, which was the mm-hmm. big pool. Um, yes. And yes, absolutely. And um, I don't think like it's a really weird one because that there was it wasn't really Warhammer Fest. It was Warhammer 40k 10th edition fest with special guest Golden Demon and some license tables because they mm-hmm. weren't promoting any other Warhammer worlds. And to me, that was a huge missed opportunity from the marketing department because um, you went there and there was a four-hour queue to play one turn of 40k. Oof. <laughs> yeah, I saw an article from, I think it was Goonhammer saying that they queued yes. for three hours, but they got yes. through... They got through more than just one turn by the sounds oh, of it. Oh, good for them. Good for them. I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe I misread it or I'm just misremembering no, how no, it no. Read, I, um, I think I don't know either. I didn't I didn't do it, so I can't say. From what I heard, people were playing like a turn. Maybe two turns or more, maybe I'm wrong. But either way, it was a four hour queue to play a little bit of 40k. And t- to me, I don't I I wouldn't I wouldn't queue for that. But I think that I would if I had travelled from, say I travelled from America, from the USA, to come to mm-hmm. Warhammer Fest. I'd spent like, what, it must be like a thousand pounds on tickets, maybe like 500 mm. quid on accommodation. This is like a once in a lifetime opportunity to do this. I would want to participate in everything they had had to offer me. Right, I'd yeah. want to play yeah. a game of forty k. I'd want to do the paint and take table. I'd want to, you know, I'd want to do it all. And I feel like, and I said this in my video, that if I was one of those customers, I would have felt a little bit hard done by if I had to wait four to say I wanted to play three games. That's like sixteen hours in a queue at mm. Warhammer Fest, right? Mm. Because the yeah, paint absolutely. and take table had a queue as well. I'd never seen anything like it. I've worked the paint and take table every year for seven years, and there's never been a queue. There's been a people like coming back to be like, oh, hey, is there a space? And go, oh, no, maybe wait half an hour. They wander away, they do something else, and then they come back. But never like a dedicated queue for it. So judging Warhammer Fest was really hard for me because... I didn't do anything that I was supposed to do to enjoy Warhammer Fest. I didn't wait in any of the queues. I didn't participate in any of the things that they advertised to do at Warhammer Fest. I just hung out with my friends. And that was fantastic and I had a great time. So was it Warhammer Fest that was good because it was a well-organized event? Or was it good because it was a light that attracted all the moths, which are the great people in the Warhammer community? I think it's that. Mm. I, I see what you're saying, yeah. Because yes. when I think of Warhammer Fest, a lot of the stuff that comes to mind is, yeah, there'll be people from Black Library there. There'll be people yes. from from inside the studio, whether it would be yourself yeah. or Duncan mm-hmm. or Peachy or whoever. Well, none of us would anymore. Be, well, I, know, I know, they're just, we've spoken to all three of you, so they're the names that oh, come lovely. to mind. Um, and there'd be people knocking around. You might, for example, just run into Phil Kelly in the lunch queue 
or yeah. what or whatever else. And yeah, the previews yeah. were great, but they what the selling point of Warhammer Fest in the past mm. obviously was all of that. But the yeah. unique selling point was you got to see the previews first. Um, mm, because yes, I remember 2019, uh, <gasps> walking to rugby training when the Chaos Knights got revealed. And I read the article on my way to rugby training. Um, but I knew that the seminar that revealed Chaos Knights had happened half an hour ago. Um, yes. And so they got the first look. This time, the first look... Was there everything look, at the same time? Uh, well, the, there was this live stream. Um, oh. I don't... All the previews were streamed. Um, yeah. on Warhammer TV and on Warhammer Community, meaning that I don't know if there was a little bit of input lag, but very little, because if they did, they'd be behind <laughs> everybody on Twitter who'd be posting them out before anyone no, else got the yeah. chance. Yeah. So, um, I think you, as well yeah. that the live stream account wasn't subscribed to Warhammer Plus. So there were ads, <laughs> <laughs> not Warhammer Plus, The um, they weren't subscribed to the Warhammer Twitch thing. So there were ads going out oh, for the God. live stream which was funny but um Oops. yeah you're you're right there was no exclusivity i guess apart from the hype of being in the room where the reveals happen like that's cool that's really wasn't yeah. there also a a thing where someone whoever was trying to do the stream was trying to turn on subtitles like you can't turn on subtitles for a live stream i have no kind of idea i i don't know i wasn't i, I didn't, I didn't like watch them i didn't i didn't I go watched... to yep I watched the old world one and that was it. Um, and there yeah, were no okay. subtitles on. Nothing Nothing went wrong with that stream. It went off without a hitch. Yep. And I can imagine being in the room when uh, insert model that we will talk about eventually here got dropped. <laughs> uh, I remember there being a huge pop in the room. I imagine, God, I'd want to be in that room for that pop. Yeah, yeah the hype but, is great. But if the only reason you're going is to mark out at a model being revealed at the same time and everyone in home gets to see it like mm -hmm. i could do that sat in a discord call having a snarkathon with all my friends without paying to go to warhammer fest yes the um, warhammer that should have been a small piece of what made warhammer fest like i don't know what am i trying to say like desirable as an event yeah yeah and i i did fear i was going to miss out on loads by not going but then everything oh, yeah. that you've just said I, i'm like okay i didn't get to play 40k early big whoop it's going to come out in a couple of months anyway and i'm going to sit down with all my friends from warhammer yes. club and we're going to play the ever loving bejesus out of it because we want yeah. to learn it and get used to the new mechanics so we're going to get the same experience in a couple of months anyway without yeah. standing in a queue for four bloody hours well this so is it the queue the queue should never have happened in my opinion um because i i honestly i get the hype i'm like the world's biggest warhammer fan so i would have absolutely love to have done all the stuff that I should have done at Warhammer Fest. Like I would have been mm. I would have been right in playing a game of of 10th edition to see if it was any easier cuz I'm desperate for it to be a bit more simple cuz I have dyscalculia and numbers are very hard for me. So I'm really keen to see if maybe this edition is going to be a bit easier for me. I would have loved to have sit down and paint a miniature. I would have liked to do the little squigapult thing that they had and maybe sit in a seminar for the um old world. That would have been really cool. But like I, I didn't want to wait in a two hour queue. I really didn't. And I just, I wanted to see all my friends and I did. And I was busy the entire time just doing that. But like they could have held it in a school gymnasium with no 40K tables and I would have had the same experience. Yeah, I think if you, they know how popular 40K is. Like It's their Absolutely. biggest brand. It's their biggest mm -hmm. game. They should have had, like, I've not, I've been to Manchester Central. I've been and they should have had the entire Great Hall, oh, not Great Hall, main hall of Manchester Central given over to just tables. Like put the seminar in a, yeah. into a smaller, quieter space and have it streamed out over another, like a, a holding area if you can't get everybody in. But they should have had about 10, 20, 30 tables of models ready so, to go um, so I designed, yes there's a queue but in my still. little um in my video i designed a fantasy i designed a fantasy like fest layout Ooh. to be like this is what i would do and i don't know if anyone's seen it i'm trying desperately to find it now it's on my twitter so i can pop it in our little group chat and we can see it but um mm -hmm. basically i can't find it right now so i'll describe it so one of the biggest missed marketing opportunities i found there was that there 
A, wasn't enough 40k tables. Absolutely agree. It's their flagship um, system and everyone was but excited to play But there was nothing else tennis. either. I bet it's where you but can there do was this. Absolutely. But there was nothing else either. Either It was Warhammer Fest. So picture the scene, right? So we're waiting in the queue for 40k and we're bored, right? Obviously, mm-hmm. there's a bit less of a queue now that I've added like another 30 tables of it, but there's still a queue nonetheless. And we go, oh, we should just go play a game of Necromunda right? Pass some time. Yeah. Let's go Let's go play a game of Necromunda over there. That looks like fun. We play a little game of Necromunda and we discover we it's really cool. We love Necromunda. It's like 40k, but Mad Max. Oh, I'm so excited. Like, great. That's another game system that Games Workshop gets to sell you a box of miniatures for at the end of the day. And then maybe after we do that, we go to the Age of Sigmar bit and we see some new miniatures, which we've never seen before. And we go, those are incredible. Oh, there's a little test game of that too. Let's have a little game of that. And that way, we're basically just discovering more about Warhammer that we love and Games Workshop gets to make bigger customers out of us. So it seems to me... Ridiculous that there wasn't the presence of other gaming systems at Warhammer Fest. Like I said, it was 40k Fest. And yeah. I would I would in no way get rid of all the other things that were there. I would just make more room for different things that people like about Warhammer. If I wanted to know more about the old world, for example, so I think there should have been like a specialist design studio booth where you could play a Blood Bowl game, a Necromunda game, and see some of the new old world miniatures that we've seen already and get really excited and kind of have that experience which no one else in the world has, which you, you pay money to go to Warhammer Fest for, which is the exclusivity between you and the world of Warhammer as is created by the creators, which is seeing their <clears throat> painted models in real life, maybe speaking to them and getting to ask questions to the people that make it. I think that's what makes Warhammer Fest worth the price for me. And there was there was very little of that there. It was. It sounds like it was a lot more. It, it, and this is something that has been leveled against Workshop before. Is it's mm-hmm. more corporate, less personal than it used to be. Yes. So like, this is something that I, I struggled with. Absolutely. Yeah, this is something I struggled with going from... Because Forge World was kind of like the last bastion for Uncorporate Games Workshop. It was was the best... It was kind of known in the company as like the most fun place to work because it it was just full of like people that hadn't really been... I I don't want to say like controlled because the main studio is great too, but maybe like refined into corporate creators and stuff. So coming out of Forge World and into marketing... I think was a bit of a culture shock for me because I was Mm. there with all my old Warhammer being like, oh, it's time to have a goofy little time like I am in real life. I was like, oh, here we go. And they were just like, no, that's not the way we talk about Warhammer. Maybe you shouldn't be posting so many old miniatures that people can't paint anymore. And I was like, why not? It's fun. (laughs) And yeah, I think, yeah, I think, um, I think there was a bit of a, there is a bit of a disconnect between people that work in Games Workshop being there for God knows how many years and and remembering when it was less corporate and acting like that. And then suddenly it's gotten too big for its boots. And suddenly like, oh no, uh, maybe someone's going to say something stupid or do something stupid. And all this like corporate, corporate energy feels a little bit stifling for the creatives who have been there for a long time. I think that's definitely happening internally, maybe. <laughs> Out of curiosity, mm. since you said you used to work um, in the Forge World department, yes. um, do you know what people's reactions were when um, they cancelled Fires of Seraxis? <laughs> no. Let um, it go, Ram. Let it go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, had, I've had a few people um, ask, me, ask me this, and I think I worked on that book. Fire of... Sir, yes, I remember this. Um, sad <laughs> is the least I'll say. Just like so, there's a few things. Um, there's this kind of thing in Forge World where we do work with the main studio on stuff because we have a lot of the same systems and the same IPs and like Age of Sigmar was both mm. in Forge World and in the main studio for a long time. But sometimes we it like some things will be a surprise, right? Like I think the cancelling of Fire Seraxis was a surprise. Is this like a moot point to you? <laughs> it, it, it's something that I I've never l- l- let go of to be honest, because I was looking I'm forward so to that sorry. so much because it's like 
It's like, oh, we get to use like you know the whole Horus Heresy, you know, robots in 40k. Oh no, yes. edition just dropped. Bugger. Yes, <laughs> it's um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know who's um, whose job that was. Please I think I was working some... on. I think I was working on Blood Bowl at the time. So, <laughs> I say, please tell me there are some copies of the book still lying around in the office somewhere. I think I think I've been asked this before. I have no idea. I, I there will be. <laughs> In whatever state it was in, I'm sure it exists somewhere. But see, this is the kind of question that you could have asked someone in, in Forge World if they were there at the open day, right? Exactly. And I bet you'd pay money. I bet you'd pay money to do that. Ramleys would. I would. I would pay money for a copy of that book. Yeah. Well, so if anyone this from is Forge it, World is sure. listening. <laughs> They, they do, they do listen. So hi everyone from Forge World. Oh, we're not allowed to call it Forge World anymore. It's the Specialist Design Studio. I've been told off many times for calling it Forge World in um, interviews. It's the Specialist Design Studio. Forge World is the make of the resin and the kind of the right. resin producing miniature company. Specialist Design Studios are the ones that make the games. So Sort of like games. Citadel versus Design Studio for the yes. base game. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very much so, I think. Okay, <laughs> but that it's makes been sense. a while. Yes. But um, yeah. It's um, but yeah, like I said, you would have totally have could have been able to ask like Andy or Mark Bedford about that, and they would have laughed, and it would have been a really nice time, I bet. And maybe they would have one in their pocket, and they'd be like, "Oh, here you go." <laughs> Don't <laughs> so, tease me. <laughs> <laughs> but like that was that was incredible because like we used to get people, and and that connection with the customers internally was so valuable for us. Like hugely valuable. Like it would it would influence our work. Like I remember I used to work on Titanicus profiles quite a lot, if any of y'all like Titans. And mm. I remember this mm-hmm. this guy, lovely guy, I, I still keep in contact with him, coming up to me and basically he, I was drawing a Titan on my screen. He's like, that is the exact legion um that my friend has. But unfortunately, he's been paralyzed in one hand and he's not gonna be able to paint anymore. And I was so sad. So I was like, send me a picture of his Titan and I'll make it the Titan in the book. And I did. And then they, you know, kind of back and forth. Um, I bumped into them at the Titan Owners Club, who was at Warhammer Fest. And they introduced me to their Titan that was based off of the Titan I drew. And that was lovely. Aww. Like, it, it, That does it, sound really cool. It was, and it's just like, well, I would love that to continue for you know the creators mm. to meet the people who love what they create to take on board what they say and to be to flourish in that environment i i think the creative need to put your picture on a fridge and not necessarily be an egotist about it but just to say hey i did this is is something which should be celebrated and not hidden in my opinion absolutely yeah so it's 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 a shame that they weren't there, and a lot of people were asking after the creatives, and I just think it it generally would have made it a better a better event. Um, but mm. like, so Games Workshop tends to swing a lot with its policies. Like, I'm sure you you probably have this in your notes, but the whole only hands thing, and I don't know if Peachy talked about this as well when he came on, but um, that was I I think silly, but um, I reckon they'll the go only back hands on thing it. does ring a bell. Yeah, I think oh, you did okay. mention it. Yes, yeah, it was. I think it was happening during the time that he came on your show. So, um, that was basically the the decision that the higher ups. I stress this: the higher ups. I don't want any Games Workshop staff to get any hate. The higher ups made to remove painting presenters' faces from the painting videos, which even though that Duncan Peachy etc. was half the reason you watched the bloody video. Well, they don't. They, they, yes, but I think as far as corporate games workshop goes, they they don't want that. They want you to tune into a games workshop painting tutorial because you want to paint a miniature, not because you want to watch Duncan. They want, but like it's going to blow their minds when they hear about car salesmen. Like, <laughs> holy shit! <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I, I can imagine and, the higher ups are like, we need to stop making new YouTubers. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But like. It, but it doesn't make sense. And I'm not going to talk a lot about like the trauma dump, which was my time in marketing. But um, it, it, if I was external, and now I am looking in, I would say something's wrong that multiple people in this job role are leaving to 
do what they should be doing in the biggest gaming company, biggest war gaming company in the world, like the dream job. They're leaving the dream job to do it for themselves for less money in their garden shed. Why? Hmm. Like, I would... I would... (laughs) I get wanting the creative freedom to paint what you want and make mm-hmm. and make things. And they, let's just say, for example, you wanted to uh, paint a miniature from I don't Star know Wars. Dead Zone. Yeah. Star Wars, great example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm really and looking you forward can't to doing talk- Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. And you can't talk about that because your job demands that you stay within the IP. I understand Absolutely. that. Yes. But as YouTubers, we know how unstable our income can Absolutely. be i don't depend on mine for a very very good reason i've very i've got things to do and <laughs> it's i can understand the the freedom aspect of it but yeah. you're right working as at, at working but working in the studio around the people who let's be fair i'm sure many of us grew up idolizing people like mm-hmm. gav thorpe adam troke jeremy v Tuck, phil kelly and many more that I'm forgetting or have just uh, yeah. or have moved on. Like Alicia Cavatore was like the first person I ever saw in a white dwarf. Or, uh, yeah, for me, it's back, all the way back for like Paul Sawyer and Adrian Wood, you know, back in those days. Yeah, <laughs> getting, yeah, yeah. Adrian yeah, getting Wood. to walk Damn. their halls and, <laughs> yeah, walking among yes. them, having just, just bumping into them in the canteen yes. and getting starstruck every single day, <laughs> despite the fact you've seen them for 10 bloody years. Yeah. Like, it, 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 it is the supposed holy grail. And of course, the grass yeah. is always greener on the other side. I understand that too. Mm-hmm. But it is odd that we have now sat down with three consecutive Warhammer <laughs> painting tutorial people in yeah. a row who have left Games Workshop and pretty much come straight on to podcast us. It's kind yes, of weird hi. how that's happened. Yeah, it is um, it is crazy. So I, and I say this, I, I made another video where I kind of talk about like not why, but how I ended up in this place. I absolutely wanted to be at Games Workshop for the rest of my life. I was, I, I had dug my feet in and I was like, yep, these are my people. I love them and I love being a part of this creativity which produces the thing I love. I, 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 I considered myself like the ultimate like Games Workshop corporate goodie which is why I started my job in marketing, which is why I applied for the job. Because I was like, this is the place where I'm going to be able to absolutely thrive doing what I love best about Warhammer. And it just didn't turn out like that. And it was so upsetting. I think, as you as you can imagine, it was it felt like a horrible breakup because I'd been there for eight years and I basically was like, you know, I was going to marry Games Workshop. I was going to be there for the rest of my life. So... It it would have it took a lot for me to call it in. It it took it, it like I'm not like I said I'm not in a place where I I want to like go into the details of why I called it in. It was more than just no, of course. yes no it's fine but um it was more than just the fact that hands only isn't the way that I like to communicate about Warhammer. I think yeah. it's it's nice to have someone in the room which you, 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 like, I know it's parasocial relationships, right? I'm aware of that. But to me, like, it almost... You make almost... a connection with your audience. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I, I looked down that camera and I was happy to know that I was talking to someone. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, there's, I was, I was... there's a reason that most YouTubers are people, like, Remley's aside, I'm aware, but are people who, <laughs> people who are. are either unfiltered in places like this Yes. Or are people who sit in front of the camera and you talk to them, or they talk? They are so good at holding a room that when they talk about something with that passion, yes. which is like the case with Rem, I can't do that. It's about <laughs> the fact that my biggest videos are me narrating a script, but that's because it's law and everyone cares about law. I am most comfortable when I've got a mic in my hand, I've got a camera in front of me, even since transitioning, yeah. I'm most comfortable with the camera and the mic and I can just flow and yeah. be me and I connect with my audience that way. The one thing I yes. miss about the fact that I can't do it anymore because of my teaching career is streaming. Fuck, I miss streaming. Oh, of course. Holy oh, bless fuck, you. I miss streaming. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I Thanks miss streaming those with kids, PT, you know who the hell you are. Oh, <laughs> uh, do, your, do your kids know you do stuff like this? Are they like fans of the show? Uh, well, let's put it this way. Uh, it started <laughs> off innocuous enough and then some people took it too far and uh, that oh, was no. the end of that. 
And oh, I'm not going to get into it. I'm no, not gonna I won't make it. you. Uh, but that's a shame. But... It would be nice if you could stream again because I, I completely feel you. I used to, me and Peachy especially, used to love streaming together. And I'm, I'm going to be starting up my stream in July, I think, again. I need a better computer. My mm -hmm. one sucks. But I am so looking Join forward to just <laughs> hanging out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what, of terrible computers? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bramley yeah, still so... uses Windows Movie Maker until like oh a year ago. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. No, I'm still using it. Oh, it's, fuck's sake. To be honest, fair. Microsoft Paint, like, civilization peaked. But yeah, like, I'm looking oh, forward to just <laughs> communicating like that again. And I remember when they took away all the presenters, not all the presenters, um, the painting presenters' faces. We would look forward to Friday when, when, the, um, when we got the hangout and hobby thing and we got to actually talk to people. Like, it was our one time that we actually got to talk to people. And I think that's how I like to communicate about Warhammer and loads of people do it differently. Loads of people feel more comfortable with hands. And I think maybe four years ago, I would have said the same thing because I have horrific like self-confidence and I never saw myself as the kind of person who would be okay in front of a camera. But now I'm more okay with talking to people and less conscious of myself on camera, which is a healthier place to be in general. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I, I maybe care too much. I do not speak on behalf of the other YouTube painters who don't have a platform to talk. Like, if I'm, if I, I'm not going to say, yeah, and the other guys feel the same way. Because they might not. They might, but they might not. And importantly, they don't oh, have definitely. a platform to say you're wrong or you're correct. Which is a shame for them, because I'm sure they would love to as well. They're all, they're all lovely people. But personally, it wasn't for me. I'd much rather be able to do the kind of videos I've been doing now where I just sit down, have a chat and also use different paints. That's really good fun. <laughs> mm. But yeah, it's, um, so I do think that the company swings with its policies and I, I genuinely think that very soon the presenters, the painting presenters will be given their faces back. And I really look forward to that because I think everyone yeah, will be a lot happier think, for it. And I expect that given the way this was, so bring it back to what we actually were talking about oh, yeah, oh, God, half an hour ago yeah. with Warhammer <laughs> Fest, the whole, sorry. the way that this war, no, no, you really don't need to apologize. It's really good to hear Thank these you. sorts of things, but Warhammer Fest will probably swing again, yes. maybe not next year, but certainly by the time 40k 11th comes around and <laughs> oh, or probably by the, well, when it does, they will know we can't run it the same way because we did it that way and everybody kind of didn't really enjoy it as much as they should have done for X, Y and Z reasons that are all yes. over the internet. Yeah. Like five years ago, I, I remember five years ago when they first like, were sort of taking their steps onto Warhammer Community being a yes. thing, you were yes. thinking... Oh God, is this just out of touch corporate talking to us through a machine? But no, they actually started to communicate, open up people like Duncan. <laughs> Pardon? Indeed. With Duncan, do you say? With, with people like Duncan and yes. others who became faces of the company once again, there yeah. were actual people. Uh, books actually had people's names in them for a bit, oh, or they stopped right. having names in them for a while. Hi, Matt Ward. Sorry for what we did to you. Uh, oh, we love Matt Ward in this family. <laughs> we do, Matt but Ward obviously... They... Agreed. It's just, you know, things changed as a result of a lot of the backlash games Workshop received, and then it became a lot more sociable, and then mm -hmm. it seems to be coming away again. Things yes. will swing. It might take yes, a year, it might take five, but things come and go and I suspect there will probably be a day where it's Warhammer Fest and the main selling point yes. is hi the design studio of New 40k are here yes. and the USP is one you get to play it but two there is going to be a two hour seminar not presentable to the public <laughs> where you get to sit with the design team as they play a game. Maybe you get your own exclusive. Oh my gosh, that's like, such a fun idea. Like, like a live battle like, report you know, with like Phil Kelly. Yeah, uh, and oh my gosh, yeah, I would exactly. love that. Literally, cool. that's yeah. such a fun idea. Like to make that jobs. your USP. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. That's a fun, like, yes. And I, I genuinely do think that like it, like you said, it does swing because, um. so I, I did a poll on my Instagram and it not a lot of people straight up didn't enjoy Warhammer Fest. Like I did a poll and I think like 
1,500 people like took part in it, which is great. Great number, big number. I'm mm -hmm. quite happy with that. Big number. And it was, did you enjoy it? Did you not enjoy it? Or do you just wish there were more to do, but you did enjoy it? So I think about 120 people out of 1,500 straight up said they didn't enjoy it, which it sounds like a lot of people. Like 120 people is a lot of people. If there was that many people in a room, I'd be scared to speak. But um compared to like the 500 people who said they did enjoy it and the other 500 who said they definitely enjoyed it but wish there were more to do it's it's a tricky one because um i always say this about games workshop and some of the questionable decisions that they make is that they will never fail nobody nothing there's nothing they can do i think in reason that will ever stop people from giving them money and loving them so things Agreed. like Yes. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's really hard for them sometimes to justify making big changes because of the community. Because so take Warhammer Fest, really good example, right? So we sit here as customers now. Hi, nice to be on this side of the wall. And we look at <laughs> Warhammer Fest and we go, we paid loads of money to be there and we were a little bit disappointed by it, right? We would have here's the changes we would like. On their side of the wall, they'll go holy shit, we made so much money at Warhammer Fest and there was like in, like the most people we've ever had at a Warhammer Fest and there were so many people, We there was a queue system. We're going to, like that, that to them will be a huge success, right? And that's reflected mm -hmm. in the, um, in, in, you know, the stats which I put up online, which was that I would say 90% of people enjoyed Warhammer Fest. That's yeah. what they'll listen to. It'll be a resounding success for them. And it was the same with um, things like Warhammer Plus and the only hands decision is that um, the, the, the phrase I, I use sometimes, and I use this very lovingly, is fail upwards. So they took away the presenter's faces, which in my personal opinion and in a few other people online's opinion was a step backwards in the quality of production for film, in my mm. opinion. I think mm -hmm. it makes for less engaging content and it doesn't keep up with what other big media conglomerates are doing as far as marketing interactions. I think it was a step backwards, but nobody yeah. is going to stop watching or at least not enough people or, you know, nobody, let's say nobody is going to stop watching the YouTube videos. In fact, more people no. will probably watch the YouTube videos because every day another thousand people get into Warhammer and those are the videos that they'll watch. So yeah, what? I've still got the Farsight video, which is a no hands video, an only hands video yes. in yeah. my watch later, ready yeah. for when I eventually get my Farsight sort out your goddamn distribution. Sorry. Okay, calm down. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I've been waiting Stop a month. I can't even get one on eBay. <laughs> eBay's run out of Farsight. It's don't, that fucking don't bad. Don't you dare. Don't you dare go on eBay to buy your miniatures, honey. Don't you do it. I like... didn't. I just kept an <laughs> eye on it. And there's none left anymore. It's that Good. bad. There's none I'm... left. <laughs> so, so I... I can't. I cannot speak for the um, dis distribution. I can't even speak the distribution situations <laughs> in Games Workshop because I worked in the marketing department, and to us, we were maybe more pissed off than the customers when these things would happen because we would have to like fight the fires, right? Of whatever. Yeah, I understand come that. So when uh, it, it, and it just sucked. Like it just sucked for us. Like so when what was it called? Curse City. Curse City happened. Remember oh, the Curse God. City debacle? Bringing yeah, it back. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I had just started in the marketing department when Curse City happened, right? And I was Lil oh, Sub's God. old bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, right? So the Curse City debacle happened. And everybody was miserable. Everybody was miserable. The, the, the designers were miserable because they had spent years sculpting these miniatures and by god were they some of the best miniatures that have been released in a very long time and then the Accurate. marketing oh absolutely like the marketing department had seen that and they were like we are gonna market the shit out of this we are gonna make this like such a great release and then by proxy of that all the customers were like fuck yeah give us those spooky little skeletons there's a little zombie cat put that in my veins like everybody was so excited internally and externally and like a lot of the time it's the same kind of people the kind of people who would be excited for curse city releasing are the people that are also making curse city so mm. like everybody's yeah. excited so when it kind of like there was none of it everybody was upset 
but there was nothing anyone could do to talk to each other. So for me, I, I just started the marketing department where everyone was losing their heads. Like, what's the message going to be? What are we going to do? And then there was that bit where like we said it was going to be in like the main range and then they deleted, yeah. they deleted the messages instead of clarifying. And I'm like, that was really stupid. And so then Warhammer Fest. I was angry it, now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, it was Warhammer Fest and it was online because it was during COVID. So I was like, great, yeah. perfect opportunity to do a public apology and statement about this, right? No. I was like, cool. And then they just didn't. And I was so sad because I was like, you're causing, and and I think the fear is, and it is a valid fear because it does happen a lot, where you open up a crack of communication and in swarms the hate, widens the crack, and then it's uncontrollable. There's that, there mm-hmm. is a risk of that. But I think controlled means of communication to the public are absolutely what makes companies have a face, more so than doing like funny little tweets where it's like, oh, you're just like the emperor, can't get off your throne on a Monday morning. Like, that's fun, right? But what I think what we value as people who spend a lot of money, time and love for this thing is genuine communication. So when the Curse City thing happened, I was like, just say sorry. (laughs) Just (laughs) just say, like, Just say we made an error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's what we said. Yeah, and there was an error. We're really sorry about this, but don't worry. Curse City will be coming back. You just got to wait nine months, I think it was. But there was, and then or whatever, yeah, or whatever. Like, and people would have been upset, but at least they would have had the truth. And I think that's more valuable than than you know selling a product or people not having a means to communicate. I don't know. I was. I was upset by the lack of apology with Curse City. And then, of course, Warhammer Plus happened and all the um, creators were very worried that, like, their animations were going to get shut down. It wasn't and Warhammer Plus itself. What was it? It was, it was the, the animations. Or I can't, it, I was, can't it was what they did. They clarified that the licensing policy yes. stuff and it read very much yes, as though absolutely. if you make something that is not ours, prepare to get a hammer. Absolutely. And that's not. And I actually did have a guy called Sodas apparently as well. So, so that that never was. I don't think that was ever the message. I think the message was you can draw two Space Marines kissing, but don't call it but a Space can't. Marine and don't sell it. Right. Exactly. But when you're someone like Alpha Buser who makes if the um, a Warhammer Forty Thousand oh, parody yes. series that relies I on the it. Warhammer Forty Thousand license yeah. to and it was the best shit going. Text text to suddenly, speech device. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. It's the best yes. shit going. Yeah. And suddenly it's like right. Okay. We can't say this. We can't say that because we're scared Terrifying. it's going to come down on our heads and we'll lose yeah. ten people's livelihoods. Yes. Fuck me. Especially no. since yeah, Alpha at the time literally just had a kid, so he was yeah. absolutely shitting himself. I can imagine, I can imagine. But um so internally, I was like, let's do a statement. Let's clarify so that these people don't feel scared. Cause these are real people. No. Which would have been and, really and we, helpful to be honest. <laughs> yes. It would have been helpful Black for man. everyone because um Warhammer Plus got a lot of flack the week Correct. it launched because it was they decided Hello. we were those hi. people hi oh bless you <laughs> um don't worry because internally we were also we we wanted to talk to each other i would have loved to have talked to you guys about this or i'd love for you to have a message about it and it was it was it, we were receiving protest miniatures that i i still have i well i did have on my desk protest but it was miniatures protest miniatures that's a new one <laughs> yeah so they were Could sending in and i Yes, they people would send in miniatures of an orc holding up a little picket sign saying, please don't take away our creativity. And it broke my heart. It absolutely <laughs> oh, broke so, my heart. That is adorable. And so one, one week I got given all of the letters that had came in about this. And maybe some of them were from you guys, but um, I read them all and I was like, they've all just got the wrong eye. Like, none of them have heard the message that we want them to hear. Not a single yeah. one of these have the message that, that we want them to hear. And if it is the message, you really need to clarify that that is the message. And they're just like, something needs to happen. But um, nothing nothing did. And they were just quiet and people were scared. And And for me, again, that's not the way I would want to communicate about these things. And I understand from the corporate side of things, 
it can be hard to communicate about these things, but God damn it, give it a try. They did their first apology video though. Remember the, um, what do you call it? The squats, Votan, not allowed to call them squats, sorry. <laughs> corporate training the leagues of otan they did their very very first apology video which was great do you remember that yeah yeah i no. vaguely, they, I vaguely yes. remember it yes I they um remember, yeah. adam adam and eddie sat down in front of a camera and literally said we're sorry we didn't get it right this time and everyone was like thank you yeah thank you for that's that. all it takes sometimes <laughs> and i think it's something that we are something that I have to remember and that we have to remember is yes. as much as we are the noisy people, we make the are podcasts, you? we oh, do, no. <laughs> we make the tweets. Oh, not we personally, Remley's and I, but the, the creative <laughs> community as it is the hobby online mm-hmm. community. We make yes. a lot of noise. Yes, you do. But in, in talking about, <laughs> hi, yeah, sorry. Hi. But no, it's absolutely fine. Like that, <laughs> But a lot of the things that we worry about and that we talk about online and that we mm-hmm. complain about, we are right. a very... <laughs> I, I do it all the time, don't worry. It's okay. But it's okay. we are still, we're still, we are very noisy, but we're a noisy minority of the wider community. Most of the wider community mm-hmm. might not necessarily have oh, cared that I don't. Warhammer Fest didn't, didn't have all those things that we are, we were thinking it would have. But they will have enjoyed it regardless, as your poll very yes. much proves. Yes. And so, for all the complaints we have, it's still like we're the noisy minority. And to be honest, we're the old guard now. And we're and, like the whingy old people in the corner. And importantly, <laughs> it comes from a place of love. And I think that a lot of people in the community don't understand that. There's a big stigma in Warhammer that the people who complain don't like Warhammer. So I I see it all the time and it's something that I've never really believed in. So say I tell a joke and 30 people laugh and one person says, that was a shit joke. It made me really upset. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to not fucking tell that joke again, right? I'm Mm -hmm. not going to do it because that's what I care about. That's and and maybe that's that's unhealthy, but you know, if if a hundred people say they loved Warhammer Fest and twenty of them said, "Here's the things I would change," I wouldn't say, "Well, fuck that 20. Um, uh, do we swear on this channel? Yeah, you can swear. This swear. is the first this is the first time I've ever sworn on the internet. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I tried to keep my channel very very like PG thirteen, but um, here I am. Um, <laughs> I forgot it's I was like on PG thirteen. You have to drop f bombs, so. <laughs> but um yeah i would i would listen to that feedback and i think yeah there is a tendency of of there's this term like anti games workshop the warhammer fans in general and i'm one of them are very i don't not not defensive they're very passionate is the word they're extremely passionate about the thing that they love and i think that a lot of them sometimes think that any criticism of warhammer is is done from a place of like entitlement that's a good word for it 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 comes from a place of entitlement so um so a a complaint that maybe the videos aren't as good anymore or that warhammer fest could be ran better it's like oh what are you talking about it's just silly little space toys i can't believe you're getting so upset about silly little space toys those silly little space toys mean a lot to us and we want it yes and we want it to be the best place to buy and to paint and to enjoy those silly, silly little space toys. If if I, you know, I, I want the thing I love to be very, very good. And mm. if that means occasionally I point out something that's not good about it and those imperfections get removed. Oh God, that sounds a bit totalitarian, doesn't it? The imperfections get <laughs> removed. But you know what I mean? Like... If things yeah, come up and you. they get and they get addressed, then it makes it a better place for everyone. And it's not yes. anti games workshop. If you gave me a cake, I love cake, but if there was a fly in that cake and I said, Can we get rid of that fly, please? It doesn't make me anti cake. No, <laughs> it makes absolutely. me extremely and... pro cake. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. It's something yeah. that uh, we've had comments before. So we, I really don't like all the negativity. If you don't like it, why are you even talking about it? And I get it because like people don't yes. necessarily want to come yes. onto the internet and listen to their favorite YouTubers sound all angry and depressed and annoyed, Whining. unless that's yeah, that YouTuber's IP, I guess. 
Uh, but <laughs> at the same token, we're not. I I have never been. I have not been as passionate about Warhammer as I have been in the past year. But the same. reason I'm passionate about Warhammer is because I now have an outlet for it in the form of my Warhammer club. I get to play it again. I get to hobby yeah. again, and I've now reinvigorated, and thus I care even more. Whereas. I think there was a time where if I was just complaining, I'd be complaining because I was complaining. Yes. I'm complain. I'm complaining because I do. I, I played this hobby. Love. Yes. Yeah, but but but, but let's be careful about the word protect because people will then oh. confuse that with the word gatekeeping. Oh no! I, I have, oh no! 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 <laughs> no! I know! I know! I know! That's what you meant. But people, <laughs> no, what good. people, people will take it. Like, that's what people who do gatekeeping. Oh, I'm trying to protect protecting the, the hobby. hobby from, Oh, from, from X, Y, women, and Z. From women. <laughs> yeah, anyway, yes. anyway. Um, but I, I, it's not that I want to protect. I want it to grow and I want it to flourish. And I want everybody to love it. But I, I don't want it to lose its soul in the process because, yes. well, that, that sounds bad as well. But it's just, I don't <laughs> it's want a tricky one, isn't it. To, it? I want, yeah, you want Warhammer, the universe to be better you want the game to be better and both of those things they seem to be working obviously with the leviathan stuff and heresy mm-hmm. getting its reboot and all world coming back and diddly diddly yes, diddly but it? you also yeah but you want the warhammer experience to be better as well mm-hmm. I, there is there's a reason that youtube channels that are usually have a face or two people or maybe a, a large group of people but yeah. it's a group of people who yes. run it and that's the same with a uh, if you ask people to name people yeah humanization yes. great yes. great word mm-hmm. it's we we want the experience of being a hobbyist to be the best it can be as well Absolutely. and what we found uh, i found as a hobbyist the things that really invigorate my love for warmer is fucking talking about it with people <laughs> yes. who are passionate about it or making people passionate about it by talking about exactly. it it's exactly. why i became a teacher i became a teacher yeah. to share my love of well in this case physics with the world oh, really? or with, at least with smart or with or with at least the group of people. I literally did a video on the science of the fucking Lasgun and it was hilarious. Um, oh so my that God, that's fun. amazing. I want to watch yeah, that. Uh, uh, You're cool. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll find a link somewhere. I'll send it to you over sometime. Please do, but thank you. Thank either you. way, but yes. sharing the passion for the hobby with like-minded hobbies, and if that's what Warhammer Fest should be, which yes. it was for you, going Bring and seeing back. your friends and having a great time, then fantastic. But rather than it be, here's an amazing community and here's the company that gives us the stuff that makes yes. our community amazing. Let's yes. have the company be at least adjacent to that community <laughs> and yes. have, pe- have ambassadors to that community. Like, They're literally called Warhammer people... Community. <laughs> They've conned yeah, the term. Exactly. Yes, exactly. No, they no, actually changed their brilliant. branding to Warhammer Official, haven't they? Warham- at yes. Warhammer Community is now so at Warhammer was... Official, isn't it? It's still, but it's still well, it's Warhammer at Community. Warhammer now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was like, it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's still so it's still the term Warhammer community, and I I completely agree. I think well, that's why I picked up the job because I was like, oh my god. So I loved being an illustrator. I freaking loved it. I would have stayed there for the rest of my life. But I'm like, oh, you know what's freaking fun? Just talking to people about Warhammer. This is great. Accurate. <laughs> like I I and that's why I love open day so much because it and I I said this at the end of my video about Warhammer Fest I said I'm really grateful for Games Workshop for giving people like me and you a space in which we can come together and enjoy the thing that we love as a community because um that's something that I didn't do when I was a fresh Warhammer person and I think I'm a better painter and person for being a part of a community because I've never really been in like a fandom before or a community or whatever you want to call it uh, until I started like posting my miniatures online and I was like this is fantastic I've made so many friends on the internet my parents were wrong I love talking to strangers online this is great (laughs) don't listen to that if you're a kid don't talk to strangers online but like I, I, I love it and I'm really grateful that Warhammer Fest gave people a place to do that but it was quite mm. expensive for the people that didn't get to do the things they wanted to do. Also, yeah. like I'm in a huge place of privilege because I pe- people watched my master classes and people watched my YouTube videos. So people wanted to talk to me about painting. And if you're you, if you don't have a YouTube channel or you don't have a presence on Instagram, 
then like and you're and you're there by yourself you may be too shy to talk to people or you may mm -hmm. you know not have you know as many people to talk to and and that that mm -hmm. may that may be awkward like i i feel that there i i sometimes get too shy to talk to people and stuff and i i think i would really struggle to to fill my time making friends at warhammer fest if yeah, if i wasn't I me that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I, I, I loved Warhammer Fest, but I don't think I loved it because of it was Warhammer the... Fest. It's because yes. it was a gathering of Warhammer fans. Yes, exactly. So um, Rogue Fest next year confirmed. <laughs> Fair. Fair. <laughs> so no, yeah, it, it. So yeah, that was really interesting, and I, I mm. love the fact that it's they, we as creators get to see one aspect we talk about yes. all this stuff yes. but i i have not been to a, a i've been to warhammer world t twice but like the time i've been uh, it's uh, uh yeah uh i'm not going to say anymore because otherwise i'll make, i'll spoil something but oh. uh <laughs> I, either way just the i've never I, i've never been to a games day a warhammer fest an mm -hmm. expo and I've always thought, oh, should I, should I, should I? And you should because have. As a, Back in the day, I it should, was the best. I should have. I'm so sorry. Yeah, now I've got, <laughs> now I've got adult commitments to do. And it's, yeah. So it's, <laughs> it's really interesting to get that insider look at not only just what Warhammer Fest this year was like, but what yeah. Warhammer Fest has been like when yeah. it was Games Day. Oh my God, Games Day. Um, and all oh, of that stuff as Games well. I, I, <laughs> I, I still remember the article in White Dwarf of the, great stomper shoot off where they fired oh the super gosh, gatlers until they ran out there of was ammo. a guy there was uh, a guy one year that had like that flocked his entire head like he shaved his head and he flocked it and did like and didn't he also stuff on his head. On it as well yes yeah that guy yes i like, remember that guy I, I wacky remember him. wacky yes. stuff yeah 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 exactly like and and like this is this is what i always try to stress like now that i have a platform that i can talk about it i'm in a position that a lot of x games workshop people aren't in we 99% of people that work at Games Workshop are literally you guys, but they work at Games Workshop. Like, they are yeah. so passionate about the thing. They are, like, it's, it's, I wish people knew that. Like, I think people forget that because Games Workshop, some of the management decisions are a bit poor sometimes. But, like, when people, and I used to tell off my friend for this because he would be like, Games Workshop made this decision and Games Workshop is bad for that. And I'm like, no. Games Workshop isn't bad for that. Who you're directing your criticism to is maybe four people in a room who are disconnected from the community. All the other creatives there are wringing their hands, desperate to make the best thing ever for the thing that they love. And I, I want to make yep. that just, for now that I've got a platform to do it on, I'm very, very glad I do. I can just make it really clear that, that you know, everyone that creates everything really does have the best intentions. And if things go out of stock, or if, if a release is mismanaged, or an event happens like this, and it kind of falls a bit flat, never blame the people never blame the employees like employee rights i'm all about that life like they should unionize but that's a different that's a different situation um they like everyone including me when i worked there was desperate to reach out and just say we love you guys we love the community we love the product and we just want you to enjoy it as well and we are very we yeah. feel very lucky to be in a place where where we get a chance to do that. And it is frustrating for um, the staff to have to deal with some of the things that happen online which aren't their fault. And it's a shame. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Just never blame the that's studio understandable. staff. That's understandable. Yes, absolutely. No, that's completely understandable. Mm -hmm. um, so let's give the studio staff some actual uh, <gasps> positive stuff to talk about. And let's talk about what they were actually doing at Warhammer Fest. Be Woo and the what studio the studios staff. have... Well, no, it's just what they they've done there. that was shown off. No, I know, oh, but the things. That... Yes, so let's talk about the, the good stuff that was there. <laughs> yes, yes, because let uh, me, let there, me there get were them up a. My screen. Yeah, there were a crap ton, and we're going to have to sort of. I hate the fact we're going to have to kind of cherry pick if we don't want to be here until yeah, Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell, but, tell uh, me, tell me some things. Um, I've got Warhammer community open up in my tab, so I can look at it. <laughs> Every yeah, reveal in I one think... place. I found it. Do you want me to post the link yeah. for you guys to see it? No, yeah, I'll, it, I'll but, do uh, that. Thank I've got you. it. Okay, great. Right. Yeah, yeah. Pick, yeah. pick one, and I'll tell you my hot takes. 
Because I haven't actually uh, seen, I, oh, I have seen all the reveals, but I haven't actually, like, talked about them yet. Very exciting. All right. Uh, the new Screamer Killer. Oh, my God, love it. Literally, literally love it. Is that the um the big, gribbly monster? The callback With to the second claws, yeah. effects, yeah. Yep, love it. I so out of the um I'm gonna I'm gonna like make this very easy for you. The Warhammer 40k box set, I'm not I'm not like I'm not screaming and shouting jumping up and down because I don't collect Tyranids and I don't collect well, Space Marines to an extent. I'm more of a painter than I am a game player. I don't know about you guys. What's your hobby, I guess? Are you more gamers? Are you more painters? Are you like what's what's your balance? I'm more on the books than uh... Ah, I yeah. paint for I paint I paint for low I paint ish and I do enjoy mm-hmm. to play. I, I'm sort of a bit of an all rounder with, uh, but I can't really do all conversions rounder. to save my life. Yeah. Oh, um, I used so to no, love doing conversions. I can't do it to save my life, but I try. But yeah, um, so um, yeah, I, so I, but neither of me, us were. Oh, yeah, sorry, those my, obvious. my um my my audio just cut out there. I'm sorry. That's no, it's just neither of us are Marines or Nids players either. Just for the context. Yeah, but. But I do appreciate miniatures. So so for me, the Space Marine side of things, whilst I love the new Terminator sculpts, I'm not hugely excited. I don't look at the Space Marine side of things and I go, I cannot wait to paint that miniature. I just don't. And I, 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 I like, there's a few miniatures which I really like. Like, I like painting a Space Marine in general. Love it. But I'm not, like, jumping up and down like, oh my god, I can't wait to get my hands on that Dreadnought. Now, the Tyranid side of things... I love them. I think I'm. I, first of all, I'm really happy that Tyranids are getting an update. Finally, that's really good. Um, beyond me, Mark Drakkar is sitting in the corner crying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I also I don't know anything that comes out anymore. So <laughs> my tap of hints and rumors <laughs> are now dry. But um, no, the Tyranid side of things, I, I, it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, I do like the um, Lieutenant in uh, Phobos um, armor. He's cool. He is, mm. he is pretty and cool. I like with the, like the knife and he's like the, got all the, the captain blood. is yes that was revealed before the show but yeah it's a good model and I really like the fact that the captain yes. is actually supposed to be Severus Agamemnon um the first captain of the oh, Ultramarines no officially um ah. it doesn't have to be because there's oh, no markings so cool. on them to make it that See, way but I think canonically so... it's supposed to be Agamemnon so, so Severus Agamemnon or Sylvester's Ackerman <laughs> the the first very, captain very. of the Ultramarines so Sever- it's convenient you've got Severus Agarin and then Sevastas Ackerin. They've got no identical names as first and second company. It's like, hang on, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. no, How more people. these guys? <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so that's who that's supposed to be. Oh, no. Um, the, apotheca- <laughs> the apothecary biologist is an apothecary that can't actually do apothecary stuff, but instead collects genetic what samples. And by the way, oh, uh, it doesn't have healing. The Narthesium doesn't do healing. Uh, oh, now you see, vis- I do love that miniature as well. Stuff. That is a great miniature. It's and basically I don't know if they meant it. bile. Uh, but also, <laughs> it's like, it could be a callback to the fact that the last time Tyranids and Marines were in a box set, you got a guy carrying around samples with a pistol, which was Lieutenant Varus. And it could be a bit of a callback to that he's <laughs> carrying around gene seed. This guy's harvesting biological material from the Tyranids. I don't know if that's a callback, but it could be. Breathe. <laughs> I'm, just imagining, you know, I'm just imagining you right now. It's like that scene from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia with Charlie with the wolf saying, like, who is this guy with the letters? That's you right now. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's um, also, Love the it. fact that the the flamer squads from the Black Templars are now available to everyone, so you can have an entire squad of space wings with flamers oh, is fucking hilarious to me. That's cool. Uh, the Dreadnought has skipped leg day, which is awkward. The Tyranid Prime looks amazing, but the wings should be the upper arms, not the lower, because how the hell does it even fly? Uh, the Screamy Killer is amazing. Uh, I the love Neuro-Gaunt. the Neurotyrant. Neurotyrant. The Neurotyrant's really cool. The Neurogaunts are a bit of a miss to me. Uh, yeah, the Neurogaunts are a bit of a miss. Uh, to me, the Neurogaunts look very flat. Like, they look like cardboard cutouts. Like, you know, do you remember the old second edition Orc Dreadnought when it, that came in the starter box? That was yeah. literally just a cardboard Oh cutout. my god. That's on my weird miniature tier list. That's on my iceberg Wait, video. <laughs> it's I all thought. connected, man. <laughs> um, and I love then them. The, Could just be the, the barb gaunts are great. Yeah. I love the barb gaunts. Like, it's a oh, mini, creepy. like, biovore hive guard thing. Yeah. yeah, but in the best possible way. And the psycho phase, like they just combined the horror specs with also like a venom crawler a uh, from Chaos arm. Marines. Yeah, and that. Yeah, so it's really cool. I think the the tyranny side is a lot. 
it's the exact same yeah. pose as the Venom Crawler as the well. The Tyranid side is definitely Indeed. the I'm most excited for. It is. Uh, but Space Marine players have... I think if you're a Space Marine player, you will love everything that's in the box. But oh, if absolutely. you're not a Space Marine player already, you may not be motivated to get it, if that makes sense. Oh, that's an interesting take. So, like, when like, I, I when, before I, I, I worked in Games Workshop, bad about I would them. always split boxes. Like, I would never paint two sides of a box, ever. Also, yes, that that is... A, I was thinking it also looks like the um, Arachnorok from Age of Sigmar as well. Mm. Oh, the spider, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think some conversions around that line will be seen very soon. But um, I think the box set is great. But the Tyranid side, I guess because Tyranids were kind of an outdated miniature range, they really went ham on the designs. And I think they look mm. great. I really do. My favorite, obviously, is the um, Neurotyrant. Is that his name? Yeah, the Neurotyrant. Very, yeah. very cool. The big the space ball. of the old Zoanthrope. Yeah, 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 yeah. As someone who like likes a, likes a lot of like Lovecraftian weird fiction horror and stuff like that, and that's why I like Zinch. I really like to see the weird alien side of Warhammer Forty K. Like, and Agreed. I think I think that really sums it up. It it looks it looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Um, Good. Uh, yeah. So Leviathan, I just really hope they do it made to order like they did last time, because otherwise we're going to have trouble. Uh, but oh, you think? moving onwards. Moving on swiftly, uh, Age of Sigmar is getting itself oh, yeah. weighed up for its next edition by doing Dawnbringers, which is basically just Malang Portents, but better, um, setting up Incredible. two Dawnbringer Crusades and the callback to Endor callbacks, the new um, Harbinger of Decay, a Magakin of Nurgle hero, which is basically the Chaos Lord of Nurgle from oh my Warriors of Chaos like 15, 20 bloody years ago, but glowed up to a billion and it's so good so um i the miniature is beautiful so the the reference the art reference which do, do you guys know who frank frazetta is yes not at the top of my head so frank frazetta is one of the best i say like pinnacle fantasy artists of the um 80s and i'm gonna pop a picture in here so you can see there is a bit of frazetta's art and it's called the death dealer and this is what I think they're referencing. Sorry, my internet is very, very slow. If I'm cutting out, that's oh, completely my bad as well. I think... Am I okay? Here you go, here you go. Here it comes, here yeah. it comes. Boom. No, you're fine. So this is this is Death Dealer by yeah. Frank Frazetta. And I think this that's is a, a bit of art. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, beautiful. it's a great Wonderful. piece of art. And I think the artwork is... The art definitely is referenced. There's also, mm-hmm. um, let me go find Chaos Lord of Nurgle, <laughs> a, a very <laughs> old fantasy miniature. Yeah. yeah. Chaos Lord of Nurgle mounted on a steed oh, from I the back that when miniature. times. Yes, 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 of yeah, course. It's of that, course that, that one. but glowed up. Oh, I love it. One, I think it's a beautiful up. miniature. It's a real painter's miniature. I would be surprised if loads of people weren't already painting it for a golden demon already. Like, as soon Agreed. as it comes out. It's a beautiful centerpiece miniature. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's not. But it's not coming to Age of Sigma alone. The Flesh Eater Courts no. get the most ridiculous scythe I've ever seen. Is a double-ended scythe staff Love for that. the Marrow Scroll Herald. Uh, the Fire Slayers get a new hero, even though they have about eight more heroes than units. Can they have a unit, please? Uh, it's called the Grimhold. Baby. <laughs> Indeed, the last it's sort of a soul survive. It's kind of like the space wolf lone wolves kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, as well as the goblin rabble rouser for the gloom spike oh. gits, who literally wears a squig hat that is as big as he is, and is accompanied by bat squigs. <laughs> he's my favorite. Like ob obs, he's my favorite. Um, have you seen the theory? So there's. Are you aware of like the squig range in general? Yeah, the, so the one that's a been half feet by eating, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So there's a miniature in like I think it is the squig hopper kit which is a goblin being eaten by a squig and there's like some theories uh, that herd this rather than hoppers but yeah oh you got me good my squig knowledge actually <laughs> <laughs> sorry but, um, no it's cool then there's a theory that that's the um the same miniature but like he kind of fought his way out of it and I think that's super cute I think the dental records mean that it isn't but it's a cute theory and I like the little bat squigs I think they're sweet so yeah, there you go. That's Indeed. the one. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, um, I totally love it. Yeah, the Iron Jaws are also getting a miniature, oh which is the uh, More Grunter, which is a 
pig so big that two orcs ride its side saddle. Love it. Like, ten out of uh, like, ten. Ride it, like, it's huge and hilarious, and I think it's a great miniature for the Iron Jaws uh, to get. So it makes yeah. you, you say um, it's a war pig. Oh, you're terrible. <laughs> uh, plastic Knight uh, Serastus for Heresy. They've actually updated that old resin chassis to be plastic, nice. uh, as far as I understand it. Finally. Oh my god, you missed the best one. You missed the free guild cavaliers for Age of Sigma. I, I'm, I'm bouncing around like that? a hyperactive wind. Oh my gosh, just all okay, over the okay, place. okay, okay, because uh, I want to talk about we'll those for like that. half an hour. Good. <laughs> I will hit it. Uh, but no, uh, Plastic Knight Serastus looks yep. really great for Heresy. Uh, cool. A couple of new Heresy characters, uh, Veron Ashuradon uh, and Lord Castellan Evander Garius, both of whom look great, but I think are brand new uh, characters lore-wise. Rem, you'll have to correct me I'm if I'm sure wrong. I'm pretty sure they just made exclusive for uh, Siege of Chthonia com- campaign, I think. Actually, yeah. I, th- actually I think um, the Imperial Fist was mentioned briefly i think it was like Cthonia's reckoning um he's like basically he's, he he was disappointing daddy so he wants to try and prove himself or something oh no yeah he is the current uh, leader of uh the forces on Cthonia, and he's actually in charge because they've conquered Cthonia and the heresy the heretics are trying to take it back um, and in the stream, because I watched this stream, they don't talk about it here. Heresy is also getting mm-hmm. uh, a bunch of like uh, art within its book to talk about like variations on space marines, like in terms of like uh, genetic uh, like modifications under That's the hood cool. that you can't see. That's very so, like cool. for example, uh, Imperial Fists that were recruited from Cthonia and hurried through uh, because Cthonian is not exactly great to begin with. Uh, and also, like, the World Eaters and things like that get some... And I was thinking to myself, oh, wait, they're going to officially canonise, like, how it looks on Raptors for the Raven Guard and things like that, too. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, that got mentioned in that stream. Um, since you mentioned them, we'll fly back. Free Guild Yay! Cavaliers, these are the best fucking things. They are amazing. Oh Cities of Sigmar's range is going to be amazing. Say, it's looking anyone, so good. Am I the only one who thinks the, the heads of those horses look a little small, though? I've heard I've heard people saying this. Yeah, I've heard a few people say that the um the heads look small and the horses. Um there's a few that they do and there's a few that they don't. I'm not sure if like the armor is too small, so it's making the heads look so I don't know. I love them. It's magical fantasy <laughs> horse breeds. There you take. go, there's your answer. Exactly. <laughs> they have tiny heads. It's like space marines, right? They're space marine horses. Space marines have like tiny little pea heads and big bodies. So whatever. They're just souped up mega horses. But the star of the show is that little snail with legs. Have you seen that? Oh, on the uh, champion? Yes. Have you seen this, Ram? I've, I've not seen the, the snail, snail with legs. Oh my god. I need to I need to I think it was on my Twitter I posted it there's like so I'm like a huge fan of just exclusively little guys and there's like the best ever little guy on the base of this miniature and I can't find it right now let's see if, have you got a picture there you <gasps> oh nice one yeah so for people listening and who can't see there is a little tiny snail on the base of a miniature, he's running horn. around with his little legs. Yes, he's running around with his little legs. And he's my favourite. Look at him. Call him Sheldon. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> but um, right. I think that's yeah. great. I, I love the whole miniature range. Yeah, Cities of Sigmar is looking like it's just going to be a beautiful, beautiful range. Like, absolutely I really gorgeous. hope so. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, though, if the new world doesn't suit you, oh. the Tomb Kings and the Bretonians are oh. fucking back. Hell yeah. And, right, I, I watched the old world stream yes. deliberately because I really wanted to know. As a Sigma player who didn't really get fantasy that much, oh, really? I really wanted to go. Well, I played it, but I didn't have a friendship group who played it, so I didn't really get that much of it. And I picked it up right at the end. Fair so enough. So I didn't get the time. But no, they've revealed the first two miniatures for Old World, a Tomb King and a Bretonian Paladin. They have been picked deliberately because they're the two realms that got squashed yeah. by uh, Sigma. So, and so like, now they've been redone. You could argue fleshy accords, but hey. But no, we're not doing that. And by <laughs> Tomb Kings, you could that. also Sorry. argue Ossiarch, but no, we're not doing that. <laughs> uh, so no, they're back. 
The <laughs> Tomb King looks absolutely amazing. Isn't he beautiful? Um, He's angry. Yeah, it's I love Tomb I, King. I, it's brilliant. The Bretonian Paladin is a really nice foot hero as well. Something Bretonians yes. did so often not have was foot heroes. Um, so that's really good as well. They also talked about, and it's not in the article. So this is only if you watched the stream. Oh, exclusive. Um, so the root map for Old World wasn't necessarily revealed, but what they did say is that the setting is the Old World in the time of the Three Emperors, and the releases that they get will be reflective of that. So every fantasy race will be playable, so people like me who are High Elf players and Dark Elf players who don't live in the Old World, yep. sigh of relief. But <laughs> the miniatures will be focused on the Old World actors, which will be the Tomb Kings coming from the South, mm -hmm. Chaos and Kislev in the North, Britannia the empire in the time of the three emperors and the orcs and goblins Yay. they orcs will be the main players that will get miniatures what about Athel at Lord? least at first the Arthur Loren is also there yes yeah, Arthur yeah, Loren yeah. is also just there. not like Skaven but, yeah. and um are dwarves there? lizard men well lizard men yeah, did, yeah, have, yeah, a, did uh, have a temple city in the southlands in fairness indeed but in terms of like the main players at this point in history are the Orcs, the Tomb Kings, the Empire, the Bretonians, Kislev, and Chaos. And it sounds like the miniatures, Fair. they'll be them first. Yeah. Also, it will be every army will eventually get returning minis from the dead fantasy range, plus new ones that slot in alongside them. So that we're not going to see a brand new range of Bretonians, though that we will, but they will support <laughs> the returning range, for example, the Knights of the Realm, whatever they happen to keep. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about the fact that... I... old miniatures are coming back with new miniatures because i know a lot of people are a bit like confused or they just don't like the idea of it like what's what's your hot takes if any uh for me i think it's the right decision oh, because if you are an old fantasy player one of the biggest gripes you could have had about sigma yes, is all literally. my miniatures be dead now yeah um with a few exceptions like the daughters of cain witch elves that got pulled through and yeah very much um, so other stuff, but most of my miniatures now don't work unless you are certain factions like undead orcs um, and a few sub factions. A lot of armies were just dead. So having a use for your old fantasy army yes. again, it's it's basically it's Warhammer Fantasy Ninth Edition. Let's not get it twisted. It might be a brand new <laughs> game rewrite, and they're calling it Warhammer the Old World. It's still Fantasy Ninth yes. at the end of the day. So it would make no sense if you couldn't use your fantasy army in Fantasy Ninth. No, so I agree. It, I absolutely agree. I have an orcs and goblin army that I'm like cool, <laughs> done. Yeah, exactly. But um, Plus, I get I get what a lot of people. Oh, you go first. You go first. I apologize. Sorry. Uh, it, I think it means that people who are coming back are not disenfranchised. People that are coming in have um, still got access to new minis. And yes, they'll have to pick up some janky old ones if mm -hmm. they want all of it. But it means that, that both the old and the new are catered to. There's new minis for the new people. Yes. And it'll be enough to be a core range, I should and think. I, I don't but need to completely same... repaint my and, and rebuy, I guess, my Orc and Goblin army. Absolutely. No, you do need to rebase it, but you don't need <laughs> yeah. to rebuy it. Don't want to do that. It all needs fixing anyway. Uh, yeah. But I also, I get, yeah. I get, I, I've heard a few people complaining that, like, well, not complaining, just upset that the fact that, like, you know, all these new free guild miniatures have just come out for the old world. And then in the article, I think they bring up the picture of the old Bretonians and they're like, look how much better they are than these old Bretonians. And then the Empire those are the, Knights, yeah. Those are the, yeah, those are the things that the old world are selling as, like, full price. <laughs> plastic miniatures and i was like oh that's a bit of a like error that they've been like look at look at the, this updated version look look how much you like them and then it's like well no those old kits are going to be sold full price and um there's an argument about like if the tooling will be redone to make them the plastic miniatures like the same Better. quality the same quality as the plastic kits that you you get right now but honestly i'm as a, a lifelong fan of old Warhammer I'm also very glad that like old miniatures are being given a little bit of love and we're also getting these new updated ones I'm I'm happy with both yeah. as well absolutely but, yeah. um, and yeah. most importantly for Tomb Kings the Necro Sphinx is coming back literally in the stream they, they showed up some miniatures that were going to be making a return yeah. uh, some artwork and then and this will include some returning miniatures including 
this Gun guy, yeah. Necrosphinx, and the room blew up. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Like, the Necrosphinx was one of the miniatures that got me back into Warhammer, which is really cool. Like, I was just, like, Googling, like, cool Warhammer miniatures or something in, like, 2012. I can't remember when. And actually, it was it was just after the Necrosphinx got released, and I was like, this is the coolest miniature. Holy crap. Like, it's it's incredible. And, and it's the one miniature that I think everyone goes, like... It's a shame the old world went away because that miniature had like just got released and everyone was so excited and it is beautiful and it holds up even today as like mm. a new miniature. So I'm really I'm really glad that um first of all it's you know Tomb Kings and Bretonians those are two of my favorites but also that you know it's 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 a little it's a little mix of things. But I think I I hope that there is enough new stuff to kind of get new people excited for it. Because I get that the I want the old world to be as big as Age of Sigmar. Like I love it. I mm. I, I I I worked on it for like a couple of months. I I did like the map of the old world and stuff. I'm I'm personally invested in the old world being successful, and I hope that there's enough new stuff because like a lot of people just get excited by by new miniatures. They don't want to see an old Bretonian miniature. And I think that's a shame because that's what I love. But I hope that there's enough new stuff that people are just so excited for all the new stuff that comes out in the old world. And then it's very, very successful from that. And I think it will be. I, I sometimes think about like so. how many people play Total War. Like, hun- like stupid amounts of people play Total War mm. and they don't even like like Warhammer. They just love Total War. And I'm like, why let's 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 team up. Like you we we'll be like, hey you like Total War? Here's the miniatures from Total War. And then like people that have never played Warhammer before will look at that and go, oh fuck yeah. I, I wanna I wanna like buy a Necrosphinx because it's just like the one on my computer. And I think that would be like great so i hope i hope that it really well i was about to say i hope it blows up it already did but i mean i hope it blows up in like a good way where there's loads of like new stuff that everyone's excited to get into what do you know what? Uh, if they do release like a box set for warhammer the old world they can make a killing if they just put a, like a sub brand saying like total yes. war warhammer the old world literally that's all they need to do is it, it's just like hey you like total war it's the same thing, and people will be like, "Oh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool." Reminds me about yeah, the days I when think, um, I think they were selling the, the Lord of the Rings box game in W. H. Smith yes. shortly after the movie dropped. Literally, you know, so yeah, they can literally like, sell Total box War copies of that huge. in like game or whatever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think since Total War is especially Total War Warhammer, as far as I'm concerned, apart from like, is Three Kingdoms more popular? I don't know these days. I but, think um, so. I think. I think it's just like less popular than Three Kingdoms, which is still an incredible amount of potential customers that like especially the old world team can can tap in or the marketing team can can tap in from. So um I'm really excited for not only like old players returning, but a brand new customer base potentially for the old world getting excited for the old world. I think it'll be great. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the last reveal to oh. pick up is well, well, there were others, but the one I yes. really want to pick up <laughs> is Kill Team, because Gallo Fall is uh, so done. Uh, the Gallo Dark is crashing. It's done. It's and, gone forever. <laughs> uh, well, the box is on pre-order today, so uh, they, they, they yeah, sold out before ten a.m. Where is it? Shock. Did they? <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm Again. so surprised. Yeah. I'm sorry. No comment. Sorry. No comment. Yeah. So what they've done is revealed the next box, which is called Ashes of Faith. Now, on one side, it's just a pile of Chaos Cultists, because apparently they just need to shift stock of Chaos Cultists for some reason. Um, but on the other side, okay. uh, they've done an Inquisitorial Agents kill team, and holy shit, it's so cool. See, I've, so I've heard cool. love... I've heard the opposite from people because I've seen a lot of people say, look at the Inquisition team and say, wow, this is the worst kill team they've actually put out. <laughs> no way! As in, like, looks? Or... Yeah, apparently most it's models are just of, boring, apparently. It's Ashes apparently. of Faith. It's Ashes of yeah. Faith, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I just yeah, appreciate the I, fact that they're bringing back Sergeant Stone them. from Inquisition. I, I, think, I think they're super, super cool. I, they're simple models. Like, no, like, they are simple models. Yeah. But they are... Agents of the Inquisition, they are like, yes. a bunch of the mooks guys. who work for an Inquisitor, including Doctor, including Frankenstein's monster, apparently. Uh, <laughs> who's, who's I'm, carrying I'm not that. having you diss Sergeant Stone that way, thank you. How dare you. 
My apologies. I was meaning just get the way his head stitched up. But no, they are simple models. I'm not going to lie, yeah. especially when put up against the Chaos Cultists that are quite yeah. intricate. I've painted a dark commune. They're great models. But as a kill team goes, I think it's a really unique thing that you can't get in 40k. And something about Warcry, kill team, Underworlds, these sorts love, of games. I love is, those games. Love is them. that they give you the chance to do things that just do not fit inside the base games of 40k and Age of Sigma. Granted, all the Underworld stuff and Warcry stuff makes its way into Sigma because there's more room. And mm-hmm. yes, Kill Team is competing for um sort of headspace with Necromunda, who have the best models ever made, pretty much bar none. I agree. So it's really anno- I agree. <laughs> but I don't dis I don't really think that they're a bad kill team. They're a bit less fancy but compared to here's some tower pathfinders and an upgrade screw here's some squats and an upgrade screw here's some here's some guardsmen and an upgrade screw at least they have the temerity to be unique and their unique selling point in game is that they can ally in scions sisters of silence kasakin navy breaches arbitace or guardsmen alongside their kill team yeah get wrecked run <laughs> yeah you can run two kill teams in one pretty much so um i i really like the miniatures i think remember when um what were they called i can't remember what they called you you'll probably know the um the kind of like fledgling sister of battle miniatures who were very drab oh, the novitiates. yes i loved them and i think it's really important to remember in the kind of like setting of warhammer that not everybody has like a church attached to their pack like we i i i I talk about this i can't remember when i talked about this but um we're over exposed to space marines we're over exposed to like the high nobility of warhammer like we forget that that you know most people in this setting are grubby little peasants and i think like it's good that we get things like this which kind of like remind us that there are more kind of like trimmed down versions of people within the Imperium. I, I, I really like them. I think I think they're lovely. Also, to um, get back onto your comment about like things like Warcry and Underworlds, I reckon that internally in the um in the studio people fight for that project because they have okay. the best miniature ranges. Like they go crazy. They're like, oh here's a parrot, a pirate ogre, and a little crab. Like it's so cool. I reckon I reckon I reckon they absolutely like claw each other's eyeballs out to get put on those projects because you can see the miniature designers having fun with those systems because they're not as like I guess uh, beholden to the more kind of like strict rules about how things are because they're just little guys and I especially especially like the um the kind of um underworlds warbands because they're always really good fun the vampire one yes yes they're all just like little groups and as far as like painting things they're they're great little projects to kind of brush off some dust and have a bit of fun with warhammer and i i think they're great i think big ups to the designers who who work on those systems because they're they all yeah speaking they very rarely miss i think with them yeah speaking of them yep since we've mentioned them, um, Warcry and Underworlds both are getting new stuff. So Warcry is getting a Stormcast uh, yeah, team, which is a really diverse mix of Stormcast, as mm-hmm. well as a fleshy Accords group, including zombie hounds, uh, but not oh, those dire are wolves. Weird. Yeah. Like They're the really weird, but also kind of cool. So, so, um, so there's some really nice stuff there. And Underworld is getting a new Nighthaunt warband, yes. uh, the Headsman's Curse, which is actually. Uh, a super awesome uber death sword and some ghosts who walk around with it uh, when you look Let at the law the headman's curse here it is here it is yeah so the blade yeah, they're cool, is aren't they? the bl- I love i think night haunt are just generally just a really nice range they are and the whole law is like the sword terminus is all that matters mm-hmm. and there's just four random spirits who walk around with it one who swings it one who reads out who's getting the head chopped off one who walks around with the chopping block and one who sharpens it that's their entire purpose in life and their whole gimmick is but that's fun. they, they like, want to kill stuff and bring stuff back to life bring themselves back so they can kill more stuff with the super death sword that's the whole point it's quite cool it's so cool i i but i like i like that in your little warband you get that little story like i just painted grincrack's loon court and they're great they're just like a bunch of goblins who think they're on a nightly quest like that's so cool nice 
See also, they're flesh eater courts enthusiasts. Oh, yes. <laughs> anyway, we have something else that we want to talk about. Uh, one last one. Rem, take the wheel because I ain't got a scooby yes, what this image do. was about when it came up I in do. the Harrison trailer. <laughs> Right, a lot of people are saying this is a teaser for Epic. However, I'm going to go one further because as many of you may remember, well, if you're old enough, um, when the Epic system originally dropped, you had Adeptus Titanicus, the original one, and you also had a spin-off game of that called Space Marine. And since we've already had a rehash of Adeptus Titanicus, I think this is a rehash of Space Marine. How interesting. That's all I'm saying. So, so can you? So, for those of us who are young and foolish, what? It basically, it's, it's another version what? of Epic, essentially. But Space Marine itself, from what I remember, actually did take place during the Horus Heresy, if I remember correctly. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think it was um, less it's like Xenos and stuff like that, and it was just like tanks and dudes. Yeah, I think. From what I remember, I don't remember, but I just know. <laughs> yeah, because they threw it in at the end of the Heresy stream or the heresy section of the stream and the crowd popped i was like why, why? so what do you what what, what when you look at this what makes you think it's that like why why mainly because it's a bunch of space marine armies facing dive? off against one another and again we yeah. had adeptus titanicus re like soft relaunch the epic game system and since we were adeptus titanicus was the original epic game system and there was also a space marine spin-off of that I, and this is all space yeah, focus. They, I reckon it's going to be that. <laughs> but when you look at the actual um, image of, of this, like, strategium with lots of icons, it looks like a screenshot from an old bloody battle report from the olden days. That's cool. Which is great, That's by the cool, way. Though. I missed, yeah, I yeah, missed yeah, those same, old same. battle reports. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but but the teaser actually... also said war on a new scale. That's the, right. that's the big thing. Oh, epic. okay. Well, that's a bit that's a bit on the nose, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Right. I understand now. Is that why I keep getting DMs about Epic? Because I didn't, Probably. I didn't know they snuck this in. Okay, well, I don't know anything, so stop DMing me asking if it's Epic because I don't know. It certainly could be though. Like seeing what you're seeing and seeing what you're saying, and like on a new scale, like come on. Yeah, I, re- I reckon instead come of just out. being Epic, it's going to be a relaunch <laughs> of Space Marine. That's what I reckon it yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes... Oh, look at that. Oh, is I have so many miniatures from Space Marine, so... Oh, that would be so cool, though, wouldn't it? It would. Like, I love the little miniatures. I just... I, because, like, it's the only time that I can paint a whole squad in an evening <laughs> is if I do epic scale. So I'm, I'm down. I'm totally down if this comes out. Like, that's me. Done. <laughs> Absolutely. Because they have been doing a lot of callbacks to, like, second and third edition as of late as well, so... Yes. Yes, well, well that's I mean, been, uh, that's example, been the forty years yeah. in Warhammer. Yeah, yeah, they, they've. I was, I was really happy about that. They, they've done a big celebration of like old school miniatures recently, which has been really nice because um, they're kind of a bit fishy about what they show as far as like old miniatures go because a you can't buy them anymore and b some of them look really goofy. So it's really that's nice why to people see love them, them do this like people exactly love them exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I try to explain to my friend all the time because he hates old miniatures, right? He'll look at them and he'll be like, why do you like that? It's hideous. And I'm like, that's why we like it. That's why I like it. That's exactly, that's why I like it. There's something, like, like especially pugs. with hand sculpted. Oh my God, are they like pugs? Yes. And this yes. is Bob Ollie squats. That yes. is how I describe them. But um, <laughs> yeah, like that. there's something charming and organic about hand sculpted miniatures and old miniatures that I really love to paint. I, I get I, I I don't care if something's shiny like like with Space Marines and Primaris Space Marines I'm like okay that's cool but I don't I I I can't relate to it on a personal level as an like a little bit of a, I don't know what it is I maybe I just like ugly stuff probably that <laughs> Primaris Marines cool no, but it doesn't compete with the drunken Space Marine from like 1987. Oh my gosh! What the the exclusive? It was an event exclusive one, or the was Christmas it the, ones, um, weren't they? Yes, the Christmas one. Yeah, God, that should have been on my weird miniature tier list, shouldn't it? Damn. You're welcome. <laughs> that was a, that was a, no, I've already filmed it. No, it's too late now. No. On screen annotation, sucks. there you go. On screen annotation. <laughs> yeah, I need to mention. do like a honor. I need an honorable mention. Yeah, there's loads like the um Space Marines riding the dinosaurs. Forgot to put those in. Ah. So upsetting. So upsetting to be me. I call myself a Warhammer historian and then look at me, letting, letting the team down. 
And on that bombshell, yeah, that ladies and gentlemen, oh. we shall call an end for this evening. So thank you very much to everyone who joined in to listen to this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. And thank you very much to Louise Sugden for joining us this episode. Oh, thank you so much for having me. This was really good fun. This is like the first podcast I've done and I forgot halfway through I was doing a podcast, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> it probably means that That's you're, you're ni- yeah, 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 that you, you, you're nice people and stuff. But oh, thank um, you. no, thank you. Well, thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank you for you're having welcome. me. This was really good no, fun. No, it's a pleasure. And we apologise to some of you that who may have been expecting like a massive, mega, deep dissection oh, no. of everything Warhammer Fest. Also, the uh, Arcs of Omens spoiler article, we just completely ignored that. Eh. But uh, we'll st- <laughs> that's been stolen away from you, just like Vashtor stole it to Chulture Engine. There's your sting. So, wow. uh, yes, thank you. For- it's been a pleasure. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, Maybe one day we'll actually. I always wanted a Black Library conference call. Maybe we can just have an old, an old hands get you Duncan Peachy in the same call oh, and just have an old catch fun. up from the studio. That would be cute. Yeah, let's do that sometime. Let's get let's get the gang Fair back enough. together. <laughs> so there you go. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Remlays from Forty K Theories. This has been me from Tactical Imperialis, and I guess me from Rogue Hobbies. <laughs> and we'll see you all again next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.